never been a top pick, still a trending topic. Daily deposit, spit facts, we don't gossip. It's some real talk, put some knowledge in your noggin. On and off the court, I run it, never see me jogging. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. We back with another one, man. We back, we back with a very special episode, man. We got my guy to the right, man. One of the best and one of the newly uh, you know, appointed head coach at Miami Northwestern Senior High School. We got my guy, Michael Lee Harris, to the right, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. Definitely yeah. got to talk about, man. Yeah. Give me flowers for show. For Routes. show, for show. Yes, sir. And Routes Podcast, we got him. Let's go. And also, man, want to introduce my boy, Coach Poole, man. Miami New Orleans, offensive line coach. Been there, man. On, coach on the optimist level. High school, man, just great job dealing with kids, d- developing office alignment, just, you know, just great with the guys for sure, man. Definitely appreciate you coming on, Coach Poole. Appreciate that. And last to my left, man, we got my guy here. You know, we just met through my guy Lee, but definitely somebody that we were just talking to, just got a lot going on, a positive guy in the community, man, um, former football player, coach right now. He get A man that wears many hats, man. <laughs> it's for real, yeah. man. Once you get started, yeah, man, you're going to see. Definitely, yeah. man, my boy. Yes, sir. We got what, Coach Malik? Yeah, Coach Lee. Coach Lee. Malik, the entrepreneur. Yes. I think yeah. that's the two. You see fit. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. see yes, fit, man. Of many hats. Fitness. You see fitness. I mean, Unconquered all fitness. Things, but all positive. All positive. All positive, man. For sure, man. And definitely, man. For me, I just want to start off the podcast by 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 you know giving this guy's credit because daily deposit wouldn't have gotten started without me seeing this guy. You know, take that faith of leap and just just go out and and, and do something that he felt would, would be a positive impact in the community and not knowing somebody like like me would be watching that and wanted to do my own thing and and, and got that motivation from this guy so i definitely want to give you know lee with his, his his credit when it comes to you know that routes podcast and, and just just the, the idea of it just bringing it together just you know bringing south florida guys and guys that that, that have that similar mindset that just want to you know motivate and help these kids in his next generation you feel me so i definitely just want to you know give his guys credit you know shout out to routes podcast man big routes. things coming soon for sure man routes. but for sure man um first thing we want to get off into man we want to <laughs> ask you man about your you know your new position man i want to ask you about you know that process how did how did that come about man you being um uh, the new coach at miami northwestern that position in itself man it's just like you know I don't know how everybody else feel, but you know, I feel like everybody all, everybody has a family member or somebody that went to the West. You know, something we got some type of ties to that school. It's just it, it, it to black people that school means a lot. So it's just like for you being a young black man, you know, just tell me exactly what that means for you to receive, you know get that position as being a head coach. You know, that's a big responsibility. Man. Yeah, man, that's <clears throat> that's ancestry right there. That's yes, historical. Sir. You know, you're talking about integration and segregation, those different things. You go back into our history of African Americans, you were only allowed to go to certain schools. You know, we go three three generations back. So that's why just speaking on the fact that a lot of us have family or we know people that went to Miami Northwestern. And that's where like that tradition starts. You know, my grandmother went there, my mom went there, my auntie went there. Somebody in your bloodline went there because back Back in a certain time, that's one of the only, what, four schools in, in Dade County where if your skin was the color of mine, that's where you could go. But on the subject of becoming the head coach, it's an honor. It's a privilege. And that's the way I, I'm going to carry it, carry it out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's prestigious in my, in my eyes. And it, it took a lot of work. It took staying true to myself, you know, being loyal to what I believed in, you know, and the biggest of the all of the of them all is you know, trusting God. You know, everything is God's timing, and I know we was just talking about it, but with pool, you know, when I when I first came back, came into high school from coaching at University of Miami, mm-hmm. you know, I was headed to down to the to the school board building to get certified to go coach at Northwestern, and. But guy Poole was like, nah, man, you know, make a name like this. And, you know, I just started like that. I started with being able to be at a school like New Orleans and work my way up. You know, I started with the receivers, was able to give my insight on the pass game 
And then from there, was able to go back to the, to the school, to Northwestern, and, you know, show my worth there as far as helping develop some of the best student athletes in the, in the country at the time. And then it came with a promotion, being able to be a, a, a full-time officer coordinator and a head coach of a track and field team. So, you know, this, the foundations was being laid even without me knowing, yeah. you know. And there's a lot of trials and tribulations that I went through because I believed in things that not every other coach believed in. You know, I had a vision and I had a way of doing things that not every other coach believed in. Like, you know, especially in today's day and age, it's a lot of recruiting going on. You know, it's a lot of transfer portal going on. And I wanted to be known for teaching. Like, my first year at New Orleans, I took a lot of DBs and turned them into receivers, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, we only had uh, Robert McMahon. He was our our youngest guy. But Shout out to Flash. I was able to see, you know, how talented he was. So I immediately worked on him. But at the time, we had him and Tyrese Cooper, Smoke, yeah. who was one of the fastest <sighs> track athletes at the time. And we were very limited. So I always pride myself on being an educator, being able to teach, develop, and get the best out of student athletes who don't have the best talent. And that's something that's hard to get other people to believe in. Like you hear a lot of Jimmys and Joes versus X's and O's, you know, and there is some truth in that. Like at some point you got to have some Jimmys, you got to have some Joes. But you can have all the Jimmys and Joes, but with the wrong X's and O's, you're still going nowhere fast. So, you know, that's just a part of the path I had to walk to get to where I'm at. And, you know, I was given an, a fair opportunity to interview and preparation met opportunity. You know, I was prepared for the interview. You know, I was blessed to make it out of the preliminaries. And when I got my chance to show the powers that be that I know what I'm talking about, I know what I'm doing. You know, at 30 years old, the youngest head coach in Miami Northwestern history, you know, I proved that I have the discipline, I have the maturity to be able to conduct under, under grown men, you know, and to mold student athletes to do better than what we did. Like, ultimately, <clears throat> I know in our culture, a lot of times in parenting, as a digress, in parenting, you know, you hear your parents or you hear your uncle or you hear people, older people say, I had to do it. Why you can't do it? You know, and I look at it as it makes no sense for me to walk the walk I had to walk, go through the things I had to go through for Rosa Parks to have to sit on the back of the bus for the next generation to have to do the same thing. Like 100%. I'm passing the baton for you to take it further than me. Yeah. And so it's just about guys being able to learn from other people's mistakes. That's right. the biggest thing. Not right. having to experience it for yourself. Right. 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 right for sure. And man. that's just the the way I look at it. So you know, being prepared and, and being young, but able to prove to the powers that be that I still believe in discipline. You know, I still believe in what my mama used to say, you know, you, you need a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of. You know, I brought you in this world, I take you out. Yeah. You know, and that's the type of discipline because, yeah, we allow, you know, the transfer portal to control things. We allow different student athletes to make decisions because they're good student athletes and we don't discipline them the proper way, but we fail in them because a lot of them get to the next level. They be back home before you blink your eye. They ain't even made it to summer A, yep. you know? So I look at it like that and I understand football to the extent of, or sports in general, or even life on a very broad spectrum that if you're where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be, you know, everything is going to work itself out. Yeah, and, and touching off of that, man, I, I just wanted you to touch on and talk about um, just living up to that tradition of that Miami Northwestern because you, you played for Miami Northwestern, was one of the greatest players, route runners in Miami-Dade County history, you know. And just tell me about, you know, Miami Northwestern back when you played and, and just trying to uphold that tradition that you guys, you know, set that foundation for. Well, I was blessed to be a part of the only national championship team at the, in, in Northwestern's history. And what I saw, leaders like Ja'Cory Harris and Marcus Forston and Sean Spence and, you know, Big Black and Big Terrell, and what I saw those guys do was be leaders. You know, at the time, Northwestern was going through a change, you know, due to a situation. And 
that entire summer period was ran by the leaders. We didn't have a coach. You know, so the tradition came from understanding that you don't have much, you know, coming from where we come from. And I know when we think about Dade County and we think about the struggle per se, we think about Liberty City. But Liberty City is not the only struggle. You know, it's down south. It's Opelika. It's Car City. You know, the struggle of Dade County is what makes football what it is and what makes us so strong as an as an athlete. You know, because we all come from impoverished neighborhoods. We all come from the Kona store, you know, and that tradition of understanding bull pride, you know, understand brotherhood, you know, and, you know, we watched, uh, I can't think of the movie, but Am I My Brother's Keeper? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am with Nino Brown. I can't think of the name, but that was a, a saying Jack we City. had. New yeah. Jack, Jack City. You see what I'm saying? And that was something we lived by. Like, and even being the father, like I'm constantly telling my son and my daughter, like it, it don't matter who dropped it on the floor. Like, pick it up. Pick it up for him. It don't matter who was last. It don't matter who came through the door last. You saw the door was open, close it. So being a real family and understanding bond and the best teams from the Pop Warner level to the NFL, are the teams that say, yeah, he missed the tackle, but I made it for him. You know, he it wasn't the best throw, but I made the catch no matter where the ball was placed. It was in my vicinity. I made the catch. And the tradition of understanding that, you know, real brotherhood, understanding outworking the competition, you know, outworking the man next to me because iron sharpens iron, so therefore one man sharpens another. So that's really how we operate, like competition and practice. At Northwestern, you know, I, I can't really speak for other schools' traditions, but outside that gate, boy, it looked like Travis Powell at practice. That's a tradition. Like, your uncle from the Poking Beans, your uncles from the Scots, your uncles who grew up in the village. You see what I'm saying? 2-2 two, two Ave. You see what I'm saying? Brown Suss. They got the gate. So all that dropping passes – you you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not even yeah, your yeah, daddy yeah, who yelling yeah, at you. Yeah. <laughs> you see what that's I'm saying? Right. That's that's right. 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 I don't even know this man. Like, who yeah, is you? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Pressure for sure. yeah. So yeah. It, it's just a tradition of, of understanding that. The, the tradition is actually, like I said earlier, those were the only schools you could go to. You could only go to Booker T. You see what I'm saying? You could only go to Northwestern. So that's the tradition. It's people that come out there to practice, and that's that's what make their day. Like, it's older people that come out practice, and that's what make their day, you know. So it, that's the tradition, understanding that. Yeah, man. The stomping ground, where it come from. And, and a lot of guys speaking on, you know, tradition and just everything, uh, you know, just the genesis, like, a lot of guys don't know that you didn't start your playing career at Miami Northwestern. Right. And you was at Miami New Orleans right. first. So just take us through that process of how you went from, you know, just I want you to take us back to when you started playing ball. You yeah. Know, like All the way to the best park, the best park in the building, North Day Bulldogs. North like Day, yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> like, Get some credit yeah. yeah. Ain't yeah. nobody got more orange bowls than us. Get some credit to North Day for yeah. sure. Ain't nobody got more orange bowls than us. I played at Miami Gardens. Yeah, I see one. Yeah, I think they had a tic tac. I think. No, they had Sony. Sony. Yeah, yeah, but but no, but I just want you to take me back to the how you made that transition from going from you know a school like Miami Norland and and transferring into a school like Miami Northwestern. Just what you seen as far as. Uh, I know there was some sort of shock as far as the program that you went through because Miami New Orleans wasn't, you know, we wasn't Miami New Orleans that, we, that they are today. they taking on a national schedule that they have right now. But, you know, just going from a school like Miami New Orleans to Miami Northwestern, just, just tell me about so, that, that transition. again, I'm going to get back into historical measures. A lot of our ancestors, you know, was in Liberty City. And when you think about Car City, which what they call Miami Gardens today, you think about PWI, predominantly white institutes. You know, Car City and Norland were were not African American populated. Yeah. When you go further back into history. Yeah. Right? Look at the history. So at right some point, books. when you start talking about the 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 Great White Flight or the Great Flight, 
you think about we get us some money, we get ourselves together, and we move from Liberty City to Car City. That's facts. That's you facts. see what I'm saying? That's and facts. when you when you think about that, a lot of our our ancestors, or not even ancestors, because the word ancestors may take us too far back, but generations ago, we can say a lot of our parents and grandparents, when they was able to get a better living, you know, they moved out of Liberty City and moved up to, you know, the Carroll City area. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that that was what my parents did. Mm -hmm. You know, they grew up in the, in the Scott Projects. You know, they grew up going to Miami Northwestern. But when they was able to purchase a home, they purchased a home up in what we call Miami Gardens today. So, and I think it's a lot of us like that, which is, yeah. Yeah. you know, because when you talk about New Orleans, you talk about a, it's a lot of a lot of guys like me, who if we would have just stayed at New Orleans, New Orleans would be one of the greatest schools talked about today, and not even Northwestern. You know, New Orleans lost a lot of student athletes in my era to Car City, to Pace, Miramar. to Miramar, to uh, Chaminade. You know, and even crop, yeah, crop. You know, nah, that's fact. Crop, yeah, so when crop. you when you think about that, it goes back to why I take the approach I take in coaching, and that's teaching. Because all right, that was the area we was that was the area we was living in, but for whatever reason, those teachers in that era weren't able to convince the parents of that era. Mm -hmm. So like. Now you stand, okay, my parents, they did it, they did good enough to move us into a better community, but they ain't doing good enough to pay ninety thousand a year for for education. So now you go back and you revisit, you know, what's important. So my ninth grade year, what really happened was, you know, I, I came from Northern Middle and which was another school that if you was African American, a lot of people went to Northern Middle and North Dade. You know, when you get deeper back into time. So when I did my tryouts from eighth grade that summer or after school, like around this time, spring ball, when I would walk over from Northern Middle to Northern High, you know, I competed well enough to get their eyes and it made them keep me off of JV. So like, and as coaches, we deal with this all the time. Like, why you got my son on varsity and he not playing? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And being a single mom, you know, that was something my mom didn't understand. As a coach today, I can explain that a million times to a parent. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, what the coach told my mom wasn't what she wanted to hear. And, you know, it rubbed her the wrong way. And she said, okay, well, this is what we're going to do then. We're going to, since I don't, I'm, because that Liberty City life is different for those who grew up in that time. So my mom was scared of me going through the things she went through. You know, it was a really harsh living growing up in those housing projects. So how my mom took it was, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep him out the hallways of Northwestern by sending him to turn the tech. But he's going to play for Northwestern. Okay. So when the coach said what he said to my mom, she took me out of North, she took me out of Northern. Like, I'm like, shoot, you know, send me to the West. But my mom like, nah, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want that for you. So she sent me to turn the tech. So that's how I ended up leaving Northern because – you know, the coach said whatever he said to my mom, and that fast forward to my guy, shout out to Florida, Andy Jean. They would ask me all the time, why you got Andy on varsity and he don't start? You know, he gets little playing time. And I explained to them it was crazy because the cycle, the, the cycle of life repeats itself. The same thing my mom asked. I got somebody asking me that. Mm. And I said to them because the transition and the knowledge – the reps, everything I'm going to teach Andy right now is going to propel him for a better future than for him to go down and dominate on JV. And as a coach, JV should be like red shirt freshman year. You shouldn't be going from JV to varsity and you got to start all over. And as you can see, a lot of guys go from JV to varsity and that year be like a transition year. They need time to settle in. They need the time to get used to the blur. And adjust to the game speed. They need to adjust. adjust. Yeah, yeah. But for Andy, he didn't need to adjust because we was blowing people out. And being the disciplinarian that I am, 
When Melo wasn't doing his job, you get out and get Andy in the game. You know, when Khalil wasn't doing what he's supposed to do, you get out. Get Zaylen Reese in the game. Get Jalen Rogers in the game. Because I believe on the team, it's just like a Cuban link. You're only as good as the weakest link. If it's one fake link in your chain, your entire chain fake. So I coach the first guy like I coached the last guy, and I coached the last guy like I coached the first guy. So when Andy got in the game, it looked like Melo was still in the game. You see what I'm saying? And guys who couldn't hold that standard, it delayed them getting in the game. So that's just a little bit about how I ended up back at Northwestern. You know, my family went there. You know, they wanted us to have a better living. But when that coach said whatever he said to my mom back then, back then she was like, well, shoot, we're going to sit on the Northwestern because one thing I know, two things for sure, my son good enough to play at Northwestern. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's ultimately what a lot of parents question. Will my son play if I send him to Central? Is he good enough? Will he play? You see what I'm saying? If I send my son to the modern day Shamanah, is he good enough to play? Because a lot of people believe in reps. Reps, 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 reps. But I believe in teaching and knowledge. The mental reps are just as important. Because somebody standing there picking up what I'm teaching can be as equivalent as somebody picking up the experience. You see what I'm saying? So that's how I ended up there. North Day Bulldogs, man. We was big. Most Orange Bowls. <laughs> and when Miami Gardens Chargers came out, they was major. They was major. Appreciate but they couldn't Appreciate beat us in the Orange Bowl. <laughs> Appreciate they hey, couldn't beat us in the Orange Bowl. Hey, man. speaking <laughs> of, hey, since we got, we, 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 we touched on the topic of New Orleans, but we got two New Orleans coaches sitting over here. Um, first, I want to bring it to Coach Poole. Coach Poole, you was there my first year I got in New Orleans. Coach Bird gave me the opportunity to become a, a coach. He gave me that credibility. I said all the time, whenever I got a microphone in front of me, I appreciate Coach Bird. That's my guy for life, you know. I hate I had to leave. You feel me? I just, you know, two business coaches decision. Two you coaches in the hive. But, man, I just definitely want to talk to uh, um, Poole because you was there, you know. Yeah. I and mean, you, you've been coaching with Coach Bird for, for, for quite some time. Um, I want you to take me through, you know, New Orleans' process of where they are right now, being able to take on a, a, a St. John Bosco, a national team, you know, being from where we was at. A couple years ago, where we were still trying to gain respect around the city, and now it's like you got a chance to become a national team. You feel me? So just talk me to you know, just that transition of, of Northern becoming and having a chance to, to to do something real this year. Yeah. So first of all, let me start out by saying whoever the coach was that talked to Lee, he ain't there today. Who the coach was? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm who was the coach? Right. We want to well, it wasn't Coach Brooks. Brooks. It wasn't Toriano. Shout it, out to it Brooks. Wasn't, it wasn't have Toriano. You on Coach Brooks. It, uh, it wasn't nobody under the Coach Bird era, right? Well, so, nah. Uh, yeah, man. So when we talk about the progression of New Orleans, like New Orleans coming up, right? So I coached at New Orleans two stints mm-hmm. uh, before I went to the Army and then when I came back to the, came back from the Army, right? And then just the, the second time I came, the second uh, tenure at New Orleans, we started off slow, mm-hmm. right, all the way to the build-up. First of all, we established, you know, a good core of coaches, right, yeah. under um, the Office of Leadership of Coach Quay, right? Mm-hmm. We started with that, and now um, you can see the progression of last year, right? Mm-hmm. We competed well. We did a deep run in the playoffs. Definitely. We, um, we, we played the third round, shorty round here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who y'all played in the third round? Central. We played Central. Y'all was 10-2, right? Yeah, we were 10 we lost Which one is it? This one? <laughs> <laughs> but Nolan, Nolan, Nolan definitely overachieved. Petty. 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 We was in the third round. But um, now, you know what I'm saying, during the offseason with the transfer situation, right? We got a couple quality transfers. Um, the process is still the same. Mm-hmm. We get these guys in, we got to break them down and put them to the Nolan standard, right? Mm. We still got to coach them up. We still got to build them up. Mm. But considering the roster, right? We believe that we got a chance to compete uh, when we talk about being on the national stage, yeah. right? Well, it's easy for us in Dane County to be on the national stage because we, right, we go through the gauntlet regularly. Yeah. So I think like something as simple as to be considered national champions, you need uh, one major or two minors a year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Central is a major. Mm-hmm. Right. So that game alone, which is, which is a regular season game, yeah. makes us a contender for – 
a national run, right? Yeah, and yeah. then with the with the addition of St. John Bosco, now we get them two. Now we really on the stage, yeah. right? Not so not yeah, the, like, the standard is still the same. We still got to bring these guys in. Like I don't That's care right. who it was or what they did, where they was at, where we at, right? Right there. Oh, what's up? God. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about he right here. They yes. got tradition like this in Memphis? Yeah, man. I would definitely <laughs> say, <laughs> sing it to so my boy, man. Cause you, you, get on that you, you the only guy. Always, he you, always point me out because I, I ain't from Florida. My guy, my guy, Coach <laughs> Malik, man, from Memphis, man. Yeah, tell I'm, us, from, I'm from Memphis. Um, tell us tell us how it was shiesty. growing up, man. No, no, no. Let the dog, let the dog. Let him finish, and then we'll go into it. Because I actually played in North Mississippi. So I drove from Memphis every day to play in Mississippi. So... The big, all I, think, the I just think the wrap the wrap that one up is just the the big piece is the development of our athletes, right? Yeah. We gotta coach them, right? We coach to win the game, we play to win the game, the whole nine yards. Like we ain't traveling into California for no dog on vacation, right? We going to play the game. And the Chris claps on that one again. The clap for that. One. <laughs> That's a statement. The nah, expectation is we win. <laughs> while we on the topic, I'm gonna I'm go ahead and say what I said earlier. Go ahead. Since when did Dade County of South Florida go against? Dade County, South Florida, leaving the doggone county. And that, right. that's what leaving I said when we had Central Coach and Coach Rowe here. Like, when, when, when we first brought up Norland traveling, I'm like, it's supposed to be South Florida against everybody else. And he was like, nah, that, that, ain't, that ain't what it's it is. It's really supposed to be Miami versus everybody else. Right. Thank you. Like, when we but get deep, not, and, 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 okay, it's levels to it. It's levels to it. It's Miami versus everybody. It's Dade County. Where you from? I'm from Miami. You from Florida? No, I'm from Miami. Yeah. You from? So you from Miami, Florida? No, I'm from Miami, Miami. Dade County. Yeah, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Miami but is then the state when of we zone. exit out of that is South Florida. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And then now when we get out of the Tri County area, Dade, Broward, and Palm, now is Florida, because that's what helped us survive at Louisville. Mm -hmm. You from Tally? You one of us? Yeah, yeah, fam. From know? Florida. You from Tampa? One of us, like we up here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta find something that you, you out of school. You so I'm, I'm with I'm with Bernard on that. Like, go hold it down because I'm tired of them saying we can't beat Cali, we can't beat Texas. Like, uh. and everybody play them, right? Everybody play them. Since you played Bosco, since you played Gorman, right? Northwestern traditionally travels. They played South Lake Carroll the year you won the national championship. The whole nine yards, right? And everybody we played play Cal Poly. When everybody played. Everybody played. Like Cal Poly, my junior schedules, year, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's is traditionally it's only right that the city get behind anybody that leaves Dade County to go play. Hundred percent. Right. 100%. So all that drama, man. That's that's just that's off the football field drama. That's for the community, man. Right. Yeah, that's for the know, barber shop. Yeah, you know how we coming behind you though, Paul. We you know we support Norland, man. Here, Dade Deposit, we support all yeah. South Florida teams for sure, man. We definitely want to. You know, it's it's a it's a good thing and a good day when we have multiple South Florida teams, you know, just in contention for being on that national stage. So it just, you know, definitely appreciate it and, 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 and rooting for Miami New Orleans when they go out of town for sure. Man. Appreciate that. Appreciate you know, that. man. But switching, man, talking South Florida sports, we definitely want to switch it up to my boy Malik. Tell us about how it is. Yeah, so so from a, um, a football standpoint, I played two sports. So I played football and baseball. But just from a football standpoint, I think that – uh, that Mississippi gets disrespected sometimes in terms of like the level of football that they play. But I then can't you look with us though. You look at the Super Bowl and then how many people from Mississippi in it? How many? Oh. Tell me. I think it was like eleven. I don't, don't quote me on that. It oh, might have been. They, 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 I'm they, not. They, whoa, 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 whoa. They whoa. They like I said. Somebody like I said. Like I said. <laughs> if you one. look at Mississippi again. The numbers are what they are. If yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. if it was eleven, it might have been seven. If seven or eleven, yeah. seven eleven is still a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. I came up, obviously, we ain't played nobody in Dade County when I was coming through Olive Branch um, High School, but Olive Branch and South Panola were in the talk when you talk about national football, yeah. not as much as Dade County because, I mean, it's hot all year round here. Y'all don't never stop training. That's <laughs> just a that's a handicap that we got just by not being yeah, this no, part of the country. Yeah, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But when you start looking at, you know, SEC football, you know, I wanted to go to Mississippi State at first coming out of high school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I look at it and it's like, dang, had I went to Mississippi State or came to Miami, I would have been on the number two, number one team in the nation whether I went either one. Yeah. So, you know, Mississippi State turned up with Dak. 
yeah. during my tenure in college. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So like I'm looking at that, and then I'm looking at Ole Miss, and I'm I just missed the dandy dozen because they ain't like my high school coach because he talked the most shit, <laughs> and he recruited players out of Memphis into into um. Olive Branch, Mississippi, and I was one of those players, but I got in early enough so they ain't mess with me. You know what I'm saying? We even got at them. <laughs> hey, if that's what you believe, that's what you believe. Uh, but, but it was some real firepower. Hey, tell tell, tell, tell the guys, man. I don't think my crowd really know. They don't really know who we dealing with right now, man. Let's, let's give them a little background about what we played at. Yeah, high school and college. <laughs> so high school wise, I played at Olive Branch High School. In Olive Branch, Mississippi is right out. I mean, twenty minutes from South Memphis. I'm from the same hood. Dolph got killed in. You know what I'm saying? So like straight out of South Memphis. East Alsea Road is where I'm from, um, but I went to Olive Branch to play baseball and football because I wanted to give myself the best shot to um, to just make it to school, you know what I'm saying? And and my ambitions were Mississippi State, Stanford, Miami, and things of that nature. I came in as a preferred walk-on with hopes to, after my first year, get a scholarship and then be, you know, working my way through the system to, to get on the field um, under the Al Golden regime. Uh, they told me that, you know, basically you come in and earn that scholarship, but then they asked me to change positions. I personally played receiver my whole life. I wasn't trying to switch to DB, and it wasn't because I wasn't open to it in terms of that. I thought about it, but then I said, no, nah, coach, I'm a dog. Next day I got a green jersey anyway. Like I said, yes to defense. <laughs> so I'm like, dang, I'm a preferred walk-on. I ain't never played this position. Y'all put me in a position where it's like, how do I earn a scholarship when Deion Bush – not saying that I don't want to compete because we, we ain't never going to misconstrue that, and all my teammates and everybody know how I'm standing on that. Yeah. I'm going to work. But I'm looking at it, and it's like, right, I've never played this position. The Nafrio's playbook was crazy to the point where starters were confused sometimes out there trying to play it. And we all saw how that went when Golden was there. But mm-hmm. you got Deion Bush, Jamal Carter. Uh, I can't remember Kai's last name, but he had came in the year after me. Uh, Dallas Crawford had switched back to defense. Marquise Gay, I was still there. So, again, people LG. that play. And then, yeah, and then you got. LG. Yeah, LG was playing kind of a hybrid role at mm-hmm. one point. Tombu Fentress, J Rock. I said Jamal Carter, so J Rock. Yeah, um, yeah, and Tracy. So I'm just like, I'm in a situation so where he it's was like on that team we stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> so he gonna always bring that back up, but y'all, 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 y'all smashed us in that y'all in that Russell Athletic. Jackson. Shout out to Lamar Jackson. We was getting at people. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man. Um, I'm there during that uh, that whole standpoint. Um, but I decided to leave after they, you know, basically disregarded the fact that I said, no, nah, coach, I don't care who you bringing in. I'm going to work and I'm going to grind it out and be a dog. So after I say that and I get a green jersey anyway, I transferred to East Mississippi Community College. So last chance you on Netflix, mm-hmm. I was on that show, not as like a star person. I ended up breaking my ankle there, and I came back when Rick uh, came into the regime in Miami. And that's when I was um, coming in. Uh, Lee wasn't there until my last year. My first year was a guy named Jake there, Jake Flattery. Um, no, Flaherty. 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 Yeah. I said it wrong. Sorry, Jake. That ain't the look. But Jake <laughs> was there, and um, I was number two behind Stacy, and Rick didn't rotate that much, and then I had uh, another injury, uh, sprained my ACL uh, going into that last year. And I just feel like I kind of got written off, and this comes from somebody telling me that they were supposed to give me my scholarship in that spring, and they didn't give it to me, even though I got hurt and didn't have to have surgery. So, Gone through a lot of ups and downs in my career, um, and much like you guys, I just want to give back to the community. I started off with my first business, not necessarily doing the production stuff, but my first business is fitness, and um, trained a lot of athletes out of the Memphis area. Um, you know, one of the guys that I, I don't advertise him because we only had a couple workouts, but he plays for the Patriots, um, and you know, I just want to give back, man. So that's that's who you're dealing with when you talk about Malik Mayweather, um, man of many hats. And I got a lot of connections, and I just want to put people in position. So, that's me, man. Uh, yeah, definitely, man. For yeah. sure, for sure, man. high school, um, Olive Branch. Mm-hmm. If you name, name, like, some notable guys. That's a good guys deal. that got in trouble. <laughs> oh, don't yeah. do that. No, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> no, um, no, 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 but name, I, mean, I, name, name, I name some. So, name so, a gangster. Yeah, oh, name so, a gangster. So, gangster, Rod Wilson. I ain't seen nobody like, bro. Rod Wilson went to Bama, um, unfortunately got into some things, but he came out of uh, Olive Branch. K.J. Wright played for Seattle. Linebacker. Yep, linebacker, came out of Olive Branch. Darren Bates, long stint in the league, playing for the Titans and things of that nature. That's um, safety, right? yeah, well, no, nah, he played safety at Auburn, then he, tra- he transitioned to linebacker, and then he played with the Titans, um, Atlanta, the Rams. So you had him, I'm um, trying to think of who else, uh, Wynn McManus. Uh, won a championship up there in Canada uh, for Calgary Stampeders, I think that's the name. That, yeah, so Calgary. Right. 
Um, and then had some stints with the Saints, uh, the Saints and the Dolphins. Trying to think of who else, who else, who else. Um, that's all that's coming to my mind right now, off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah okay. man, for sure, for sure, for man. Sure. Hey, I think right now we had we, we passed the the, the 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 high point in the show, so it's time we get into the debates. You know, you know, we want to bring up some topics and you know just get these guys' thoughts and sentiments on these different. These different topics, just see where we stand at. Just, you know, this, this is the bait show. That's what we come here for, you know. Disagree and, and respectfully disagree and, and be able to explain our points and our positions. So, without further ado, I want to bring the f- first question to the table and then spread it around and get everybody's thoughts on it. And it's something that we ain't talk about, and they don't know what I'm about to say. It's just off the dome, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, they don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about. But, hey, nah. Crazy. But I want to know. Go. I already know what the lead answer going to be. I, I, he just going to have to give me a reason that we got to really dissect it. But I want to talk about his national championship team, you know, t- Miami Northwestern in 2007, national championship team versus that first Miami Central team that won state. That was 2010, I believe. Cause that's my the, man's in them. That's the, that's the, that's the debate Shout that's going on. 2010 Central versus 2007 Miami Northwest. They don't stand a chance. How, how, how that, how that matchup would, like, <laughs> they don't stand a chance. Just let they don't me stand know. a chance. Yeah. yeah. They don't stand a chance. Well, well, There's no, okay, so. Matchup wise. Let me tell you why. Yeah, well, matchup you wise. You got to tell me to every position. I'm, I'm, it, I, the, the one position, even if we want to say if we it take the over on the game, yeah, over. Over. even Definitely if you want to take the over on the game, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, who was the DBs on that team? <laughs> they had um, <laughs> they had, they had Thomas on, Finney. Tommy Finney. <laughs> <laughs> they had Finney, Charles my guy. So you know we talking guy. sports. Finney, my guy. I mean, like, you, you, you could go, you could go either. You could go either. You could go. Derrell, my guy. You could go, but you could go either way. CJ, CJ, a bomb and lock you up. Come on, he's my guy too. Cut it out. Man, listen, listen. When CJ played ball in this town, he was the real deal. He was exactly. Like what we doing? He was a man among boys. He was, and it wasn't even close. Okay, okay. I'm gonna give you CJ. But now let me give you us. You got D, Aldarius Johnson, Tommy Streeter, Kendall Tompkins, Robert Demps, uh, Brandon Dre, and we called him Beto Quick Six. And you know who was the sixth guy to come off the bench? You looking at him. Six? Then you had Wayne Times and Tyrell Lewis. Shout out to Times. So when we went empty, who was going to cover us? <laughs> nah, that's crazy. With our quarterback standing at 6'5". And our lineman was standing at six five with us, big black, I mean, you know Terrell. Are, come on, I mean, shit. How how big was my pace? Like, Miles' pace wasn't big. Don't do that. What? He's still five eleven right now. He's still five eleven right now. Coach Chuck, on that team. Coach Chuck. who coach us? Carol, right big Carol oh Phillips. Guy. Carol Phillips, six five. Six Carol, four. my guy. Carol, like six two. We, I just nah, man, six three. Carol. Six three. He got good. Six really three. good guy. He was at Illinois when I coached at Illinois. Really okay, good guy. the white. I like the white. Yeah, like what twenty plus sacks. He did. Yeah, okay. That's two linemen so far. Two D linemen so far. No, that's that's it. I said like, I okay, said, now let's go back to our defense. I said like, I said like, I said like, Freeman was on that team. Too. Yeah. Freeman was on that team, but yeah. cut it out. Freeman was on that team. Ran for cut a it out. He ran for a band. Freeman did that. Ran for a band in the playoffs. Let me tell you why. We have arguably one of the best linebackers in the NFL right now, yeah. Levante, Levante David. David. Mm-hmm. He was Levante. on that team. Sean Spence. And we all wish things would have went better for Quavon Taylor because he was the hardest hitter on that team. <laughs> and then when we moved down to D-line, hey, big hit, Marcus Quay Forster. Quavon Taylor. Yeah, no. Quay used to hit the hardest on the team. <laughs> <laughs> he went to school with me, so I know. Quay hit, Quay hit the, and then we had Quay. Todd Chandler. I, yo, I ain't gonna lie, right? I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna I'm rock it, right? I'm a rock boy. But at the same time, like, what they was able to do that particular year, and that's the only reason I get them the edge, right? Yeah. They'll win the game by one point. What they was able to do that particular year with no coaches, where uh, Rudy Crew, who was the superintendent, was mm-hmm. almost gave the, the football program a death penalty, right? You spoke about the, the, the athletes running the program. Billy Rowe just had took the job at Central. He left to go to Northwestern, and that thing was on autopilot, right? Mm-hmm. So that I think that's the one edge that they got. How? When we literally – Man, hot. listen, I gave it to you. <laughs> well, we, I gave are, it to oh, you. Oh, you gave it to Northwestern? I just gave it to Northwestern. Oh, okay. Because I, 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 I was about to say. About no, one I was about to say. Only because the kids ran it. No, only because I was about the kids to say that because it was the, the situation that went on with the best running back to come through Miami-Dade County. 
the yeah. situation that went on with Twan, Ja'Cory Harris them displayed. That was the year before. Twan was the year before. Yeah, but that was the reason why we had no coaches. I understand that. When they got but what them, I'm saying is which, the reason which, why I'm giving you which, all the edge which my, my central Rockets, Rockets who hate to hear this, the only reason why they're on their run <laughs> is because we lost our coaching staff to Miami Central. No. Oh. But hold on, hold on. No. <laughs> so so you so you telling me right now. So you no telly, me. no Roland Smith. Telly was at uh Telly was at Central. Yeah. So without those guys, Central is still trying to become Central. Let me ask you this. Central. What, 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 Central, what, Central what, what did Telly do? What, 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 Central, Central is Central. The only reason why they made their the way hey, is because when, hey, the school, when the superintendent came down with the hammer, I'm talking about they got rid of teachers. Hey, yo. They got rid of athletic oh, directors. Boy, they they, they got rid of act, coaches. Like what? what? <laughs> they were going to get a program to death penalty. Like what? Rudy Cruz like said, no football. What? Man, the whole yeah, city went out. This ain't no bad Bro, 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 bro. They got rid of, bro, that's bro. Crazy. Listen. They got rid of everybody, man. Everybody. Janitors. <laughs> 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 Not me, though. The, the big thing, though, like, the whole the whole city got behind them. The whole city, like, that's what town kept hall the team. Meeting, Central, Booker T, Northwestern. Right. Everybody was down at Town right. Hall. Everybody rallied for us. And Rudy Crew couldn't do it. He said, I'm going to let y'all play football today, this year. But no coach. No personnel that was involved in that situation that's on that style is going to coach for Miami Northwestern or any school in Dade County. Mm. That's what he said. He that's what happened. Mm-mm-mm. That's what happened. So, so getting back to the matchup, the, the, that 2010 versus that 2017. Well, I got Kato. As, you got Kato. Yeah. Shout out to Kato. Kato, Kato a winner, man. Kato, Kato is Kato legendary. Kato, well, I thought Kato, Kato is something crazy. I feel like any Kato is legendary. But when we, but when we do the rankings... Who are we going to rank first? Kato. Cut it out. I'll call him. Don't make me call him. He going to tell you Ja'Cory Harris. Cut it out. <laughs> don't do that. I like yeah. Don't do that. I ain't I mean, taking Ja'Cory don't do Harris that. over Kato. Like don't Kato. do that. No, I'm not taking Ja'Cory Harris over Kato. I'm not taking him I over like Kato. Kato. For me, Like the I, weapons he had, man, he could have threw the ball and I would have caught it. Straight up like that. But then you did contradict what you just said. I, yeah, for the I, weapons I, he had. I did, I did, I did, I did. Okay then. Because you listen, got no weapons. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> he, listen, listen, listen. Damn. Uh, he I need a pocket knife. Yeah, I need that. But listen, he called hey, hey, listen, to this, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, listen. No, to because listen, what he said is true. No, 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 he had no, 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 two six six receivers. That's why I was going. You right. Tommy Streeter. Adair Johnson. Tommy Streeter stood up in the South Lake Carroll game. That's when the whole world was like, whoa. Who is he? That he's a guy, right? Or Darius Johnson been a guy, yes, right? Sir. Right, and then um, yeah, Lee. So that's all I'm saying. When they come back, when they come down to that game, because like you know y'all going empty, and what y'all gonna do about it? That's all they, that's all they gonna do. They can't run the ball. Still Why to this day, they can't run the ball. Yo, I'm telling you right now. Outside still the fact to this day, that they we still had the, we still had the three fastest running backs. Why I won't run the ball then? Cause we we did we, that year we still rushed for a thousand a fifteen hundred plus between Corvin, Digamo and Tyrese we still rushed for over fifteen hundred, and that's just me downplaying because I don't know the exact stat. Yeah. Mm. When well, y'all was down, Deerfield right? Mm -hmm. Y'all got the fumble, and the legend goes Jacory March what ninety nine yards mm -hmm. to go win the game, mm -hmm. like. How how was the run game in that in that game? Cause that's, so that, cause that's Tyree so scored the game, game winning touchdown from running back. From obviously, back. obviously, because you don't know. Obviously, don't know is one. ninety. I'm sorry, is 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 sixty seconds on the clock. Yeah, and we're on the one yard line. I say what the situation was. That's the situation. Yeah. We yeah. went ninety nine. With one minute say, on the they, clock. Y'all ran the ball? Nah. Well, how oh, so <laughs> no, when we got down <laughs> to like, the plus up. territory, <laughs> yeah. And then ran the ball. Of course, right. the niggas going to be backing up. Right. But we went 99 yards with 60 seconds on the clock. And I think that was the last game played in the Orange Bowl before they knocked it down. Like, this is legendary. That's crazy. So, like, this is legendary. Before they knocked down the Orange Bowl, yeah. we played in it. So so tell me, you said Miami Central, you like Kato. Tell me another reason why you like Miami Central besides Kato. What else on that team where you feel like they would have the edge against a team like a two, that 2007 Miami you Northwestern know, team that had very little flaws, if any? I just feel like 
But then I can't say Coach AJ because AJ was with them too, right? Nah, no, really. we oh. had lost those coaches. Oh, oh, no. oh, so yeah, so I can say AJ. Oh yeah, so yeah, one of the. So you think a- AJ out schemed Sean Taylor? This was the three linebackers. I'm talking about Sean Taylor. Yeah, about These yeah. are the three linebackers: Sean Lebanon. Spence, <laughs> Levante David, and Quavon Taylor. Those are the three linebackers. Big Marcus Forston, who also went to Miami with them, mm-hmm. and Todd Chandler. Now we still have Big Black on DN. Like these Brandon guys, Brandon huh? Brandon Washington? No, no, no. We had two Big Blacks on that team. All right. Yeah, those guys were six three. Run. These guys we still hang with to the, till today. Kato I mean, ain't six three. <laughs> nah, um, um, Miles Pace ain't six three. The only person who's six three is is a wild man. Nah, the white too. The white um about good six. Okay, the white, the white. But other than that, no, because and then you Freeman, got, and Freeman. Then, I'm, but they had, and but I'm they gonna had, give you my honest they, opinion. But on they Freeman. had, but they had. Depth I'm gonna give you my honest movie. opinion on Freeman. When we played Freeman. Like, he couldn't do nothing on us. Nothing. Brandon Gaynor gave us a headache. Okay. Brandon Gaynor Brandon gave, gave us a headache. That was the year before. He was, he was older than him. That was the year before. All right, yeah. bingo. Devontae became Devontae in the playoffs of that year. Now, he was he was Devontae that we knew because we, we know, like, you know, we know he a baller, but the free men we know today – who scored what three touchdowns in the Super Bowl, or oh, and went on that crazy run at the Falcons? Yeah. He became that Devontae Freeman uh, when he rushed for a thousand Freeman, yards in the Freeman playoffs. Freeman, Freeman, Freeman. Listen, he rushed but, for a listen, thousand yards in the playoffs. You can't say he was that guy, but as a coach in this in, in Dade County, you can look at a kid all the way from Optimus and say he's gonna be special, especially when he get to high school. Right. He's gonna be special. Right, 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 so right, 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 right. Freeman, we knew he was gonna be special from Edison. just like all but, of and us. And he played quarterback in Optimus. Just like all of uh, us, we uh, knew Jeff was gonna be special. No, we knew everybody know. was gonna be special. So, oh, he was on. Was he on the same team with Duke? Cause Duke was running back. That's what I'm so. saying. So he played quarterback. But mm. you like knew that. Freeman was gonna be special at Edison. No, you knew he was. Right. So but I'm saying. How you saying he stepped into Freeman? I'm saying as a that. Senior. Yes, I'm saying. He's saying he turned up. In the playoffs, man, that, that man been good. He was good at Edison. All right, no, but, he but, was. Hey, but to close out this conversation real quick to get to the next topic, we got Central. We got the 2010 Central team. Who we got? Ooh. Out of he got the 07 Northwestern. Northwestern. Got got I'm going to I'm I'm rock with Northwestern only because of the adversity that they faced going into that season. Okay. Right? And we know that Billy Rowe was probably. Uh, probably and y'all lost a, lost a game that year, right. didn't y'all? Yeah. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> who you yeah, got? Who you got? Who you got? It's crazy when that's I'm the standard, though. <laughs> <laughs> lost one game. You <laughs> feel <laughs> what I'm saying? That's the standard. Them boys lost one game, they trash. Right. No, I'm not saying they trash, but you're comparing a state team to a national team, and you think a state team. But we're talking everything with it, though. Like, them boys got the edge. We went into South Lake County. But I'm saying, but y'all got Billy Rowe. Packed out SMU Stadium. But y'all got Billy Rowe. You're not hearing me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Lee. So, not to spin. What was Telly Lockett role at Northwestern under under when they got the death penalty? When they was about to get when all on got fired. What was what was his role there? He was OC. He was OC. Now he getting a shot. He he can't stand on his own. Oh, he he a Northwestern coach. He can't stand on his own over that. No, he can. I'm saying without Telly, Central can't stand on their own. Yeah, he's saying Telly. Telly is a guy. It all type thing. But without. Telly, there's no central. Uh, but but that's they, just they but that's just but, but hold on telly, though. Telly graduated but from Northwestern. He graduated from Northwestern. Uh, I, I don't know about all that. I'm if just he saying. graduated from Northwestern, I'm just I, I bet he ain't gonna say I'm a Northwestern coach. He was a coach that. I'm not. Around, that's that's, right? that's that's. So if I got a head coach all the day, am I am I a Northern coach or can I stand alone? Oh, is everybody going is everybody gonna hold me to the standard? You're asking one question and then you're digressing. You're contradicting. Central can't stand on their own. How? Telly could stand on his own. We remove. If we it's remove. Like, yeah. It's like Jordan. And I'm, and I'm, taking, I'm, I'm taking all the way to the like process. I'm going to go this I'm deep and say it like this. If you remove Tommy Shula, Central die. You remove Michael Lee, Northwestern still was a state contender. So Northwestern stands on its own. Central don't. Central do stand on how? Because if you remove Tommy Shula, do the receiver oh, so still? About that team. Answer yeah, this question. About back in Answer this question. Okay, Cause, yeah. cause this is this is the correlation because we're talking about the coach and the school, right? Mm. If you remove Tommy Shula, do you still produce those same type of receivers? Mm-mm. No, Shout right? Out to no. So that means Central don't stand on their own. 
But he's a rocket. Dude. If you remove Chop through the old line, if you remove AJ through the play calling, if you remove Roland Smith, if you remove Jewel, who Jewel has Jewel's laid yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wait, hold on. So, so they, they still winning. Those they got coaches. Line. But Jewel, you can't question. say Jewel. You can't say Jewel. You can't say Jewel. Jewel's Jewel. 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 I'm not saying that. I'm answering his question. Oh, okay. Do the coach stand on his own? Yes. Do that school stand on its own? No. Man, listen. Miami Northwestern is Miami Northwestern during, no matter during, the coach. During, during that time, <laughs> during that time, I, 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 I'll say this. If Billy Rowe wouldn't have left, the possibility of us winning the state championship would, would have been high because he left and won another championship. Billy Rowe is a really good coach. All right, then, so so he stands on his see, own. That answers your question. What's, what's his question? What was his question? <laughs> hold on, hold on. You, you trying to you trying to associate, you trying to associate, did Telly, you trying to associate did you, them with Northwestern? No, I'm not. You said does so Telly stand on his own? We wouldn't have been nothing. At and Central I'm saying my argument. I'm saying my argument is Central is nothing without the coaches. Even if you just take off Northwestern, those coaches who have stepped into the role over there at Miami Central right now is the reason Central is who they are. Yeah, it is who. It, all the way down to recruiting. If you don't get those coaches to go over there to Central, you don't get Cato and Shula because they was checked in at Miami Northwestern right with Darrell Eskridge. Cut it out. Darrell, Cut it out. Darrell. Darrell went to Northwestern first. Call him. Call him. <laughs> before he went to Edison? Like, call him. Be did Darrell go to call Northwestern him. before he go to, went to Edison? I'm call just, him. I ain't got to call him. I'm, I'm just right. checking the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. He was only there so for, two, he for he like the he first like, two nine weeks. Yeah, he was... Yeah, he want he, okay, he, he cut he, it out. He, 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 he cut it out. This is before out. after Edison. Lee. Before. before his first after, school right, was cool. Northwestern. Then right. I can agree. But hey, two. But now OJ, who you got out of out of the uh, team? I'm taking, I'm taking the West, bro. You got the West. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ignore that. You got the West, and I know I'm, I'm going to rock. They lost a game that year. You got to rock. Oh. I was, I'm no, rocking with Lee team. Got it out, Lee team. Yeah, got it out. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. But we ain't lose no game. Like I don't know enough, but I do know that when I was young watching nah, Miami no. and Jacory was a quarterback. Facts. I'm like, he going up top. <laughs> <laughs> Blue. Straight up. Yeah, nah. but if you saw if you saw Cato side by side, then you would probably Cato was that thing. Was that thing. Cato was a monster. You'll probably literally say, Oh, Cato was the monster, but what separates like, Cato's team? Winner. I'm finna start going looking at clips. I'm gonna revisit yeah. this. Yeah. What separate sure. Cato team from Jacory's team is the number of leaders. See, every name you called on that team was not a leader. Not every name you called on that team was an a leader. I mean, and oh, see, CJ would have did his thing. You see what I'm saying? Mm. You know, even my man's Dre. Nah, shout out to Dre. Dre, Dre, them boys would have did their thing. But what out there is, them boys would have did. <laughs> come on, come on. Right, we don't so even know who y'all DBs was, man. I, I already told you the DB. All right, but all right. Thomas Finney. Nah, he passed Finney him around. He was run, he was fast in the mud though. You can't see everybody was fast. Yeah. Man, but you're Central, a track guy, so Central, I can't even yeah. talk Central, fast to Central, a track guy. Finney was legit, man. <laughs> Finney, Finney was bad. Finney was bad. Finney, 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 Finney was bad. legit. Sorry, Finney, man. But Finney 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 we're not comparing bad. Finney. We're not comparing Finney to no, Barbara Gold. I, I know, I know why you're <laughs> playing Finney right now. I know that, why you're playing him. Finney, my guy. I like these right. people. That's it. Finney was that guy. I had a field day on everybody, including Charles Gaines, when we played Central. Now I gotta go fact check that. Go fact check it. I gotta fact check. Hey, no, nah, but me for for me, I'm gonna have to take the 07 West team. Like you said, coming up, man, that was like a culture changer for 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 me. Like football wasn't my first sport. I was a baseball player first. So just coming up, seeing a team like Miami Northwestern go to um Orlando, just take on them teams. It's just like man, that was that was big for for a lot of black people. Cause I was just seeing that as like a a big family reunion. You know, it's like. I seen all these black people up there celebrating Miami Northwestern just up there supporting them. And so it's like, for me, it's just they always hold a special place in, you know, the foundation of sports and football for me in South Florida. So I definitely got to go with that West team. But I wanted to ask you, what team you think would give y'all the best, you know, game as far as, because y'all, like you say, y'all won national championship. We had another team down here that won national championship, a couple. We had, Two. um, um they don't stand a chance. we got Two. Booger T. That, 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 team that 07 team and Trey on my guy. They done smashed them. Nah. Major nine, shout out to them boys. Them boys was different. But they had that four by like you said, them receivers, yeah. that four yeah. them different. receivers. 
That folk, the man, man. Them guys was running. They had their turn. Them boys were fire eight. Man, they were fire eight. They had Marty. But them boys were running though. They were up in the jump on nobody neck. Boy, them boys had six five. Them boys was Buddy was Streeter ran four three at the combine. You were gonna have to go up against Najee. Them boys were throwing phase for them boys were throwing phase for fun. So so you don't think match no up. team can match up? No, with that I'm gonna tell you the teams that I think the teams that I think would have made it fun to watch was the other two O seven state championship teams. Lakeland and St. Thomas. The Pouncey twins, Chris Rainey, Amar Black on that Lakeland team. Giovanni Bernard, uh, James White, yeah. Major Wright, all those guys over there at St. Thomas, them the schools we was looking forward to playing. And they battled year after year at state, those two teams. Yeah. Because they matched up with us leadership, height, their tangibles, their measurables. Like everybody else was just crazy athletic. I mean, you look at that Booker team, Booker T team, crazy athletic. You see what I'm saying? Trayon, get out the pocket, house call. You see what I'm saying? That's almost equivalent to what we did with Tutu. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And you was not beating Sean Spence them like that. They was disciplined. <laughs> you weren't beating them on no scramble drill. That's what I'm telling you. You weren't beating them boys like that. They was disciplined to their assignments. And when they hit you, they <laughs> hit you. <laughs> and, and another thing, every one of them, this is the key. This is what's different from a lot of teams today. Every one of them, Played and took special teams serious. Punt return, kick return, kickoff. It was a, I was a 10th grader. It was a pleasure. It was an honor. It was like, please can I get on kickoff. Yeah. <laughs> I promise I'll run down there and hit somebody. <laughs> and that's what really separate that team from other teams. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. them boys, like, they was disciplined. Sean Spence was disciplined. Marcus Forster, them boys was disciplined. They played gap sound football. Bro, we got the record. Eight shutouts. Name another school that did that. In 2007... Now, Cause now we talking stats. You want to man? Let's no go. Man, we nothing. Gave it to you. When we <laughs> talk about <laughs> <you, laughs> <you, laughs> I like saying Tommy. When we, when we, so you like saying Tommy. Oh, cause they not, cause they not the West. He yeah, like, the yeah, come on, man, man. He don't even know why he like him. Come on, man, man. We got eight. Them people had James White and Giovanni Bernard in the backyard. Then you go receiver. They had Leonard Hankerson, but they lost state to Lakeland. I mean, they always lose the league. Okay, so how you from but, but, the, but, how you but, keep but, 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 no, 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 no. runner up? <laughs> no, no, hold on, but no, but they, but hold on. They always lose the Lakeland, right? right? But they always went back and forth with Lakeland. They did. The, St. Thomas got fourteen state titles. They have been winning, so it's right. not like they just run up. They just lose. No, but you said that losing. team though. But, but no, that's but Pacific saying, team. But, okay, yeah. but that Pacific team. But you feel what I'm saying? But what I'm telling you is. You saying like with the depth, like that's what I'm just saying. I'm just going off of the depth and the guys that's willing to match y'all depth. Right. They had depth. That's right. all I'm saying. No, I'm, that's why I say when you ask that question, I don't, I don't think about it uh, once again because first off, I don't want to get our barbershop talk, our sports analyst talk, our first take talk mixed up with how we really feel about these people, like. Tommy Schuler, Raheem Cato, Charles Gaines, Devontae Freeman, Brandon Gaynor, Miles Pace, Dwight, you know, these guys deserve their flowers, man. They was hell of athlete, hell of a athletes. You see what I'm saying? They was Can we get around for that for them Rockets? Oh you see what I'm saying? Shout out to the Rockets. Like they was they was amazing, outstanding athletes. So when we talking about, because at the end of the day, we don't ever we don't compare Jordan to Tony Parker. We compare Jordan to Kobe and LeBron. Wow. Mm. So when we're talking about, we're talking about conversations of greatest of all times, we have to point out flaws, but we can also get misconstrued with making it seem like those guys wasn't guys. Those were some guys at Central. But when I think about who would have gave that 07 team a headache, I don't think about Kato them. I think about Chris Rainey them. They was a problem. Yeah. 
The like. Pouncey twins was a problem at Lakeland. I feel like. They was a problem. And they went in three overtimes. I remember it like it's yesterday. At the Dolphin Stadium. If 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 St. Thomas just kick a field goal, they go to four over they go to the fourth overtime. But they went for it. They went for the gusto. They went for it. They went for the two point conversion. If they just kick the field goal, we go to sudden death. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But I think about teams like that because I think about being disciplined to your assignment. You see what I'm saying? When when Cato them boys lost to, I think, Camden that year, it was because certain people was not disciplined to their assignment. That was never the problem with that Ja'Cory Harris team. And the only reason why we was in a dogfight with, with, Sho- with Shoelace and Deerfield Beach that year is because Al Darius, for whatever reason, was having a bad day. It was like he couldn't catch a cold. That was the only reason why we was in a dogfight with them. That was the only reason. If we show up to that day and he having a normal day, we blow shoelace them out. But I'm saying, what was the final score of that game? I don't know. We won by one touchdown. We was down. Yeah, I was down. So that I'm saying, so they were scoring. So they it was like 21 14. Like. That's what I'm saying. So they were scoring. They scored twice. Twice. Okay, so okay. they scored twice. Scoring and scored twice. Oh, all right, so, okay, so I'm saying they scored <laughs> twice. Man. No, 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 no. Because he said, no, because he said, like, the only reason why they, they you feel me, out there is wasn't catching the ball. Yeah, That's so. That's assignment. So he was saying, like, that was never the problem. So I'm just saying he contradicted himself. Right no, nah, assignment is different. See, when we're talking about assignment, yeah, thank you. Nice All right, but he, was, he did not yeah. execute. That's not, that's not doing his job, though. He's a wide receiver, right? No, so his job is to catch the ball. All right. So but he, he, he won the ball. No, no, no. Well, I got the ball. ball. But, I, but got it, I got him. I got him. Hey, that 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 killed him. He dropped the ball, but then he ran around. That killed the drop. What if it was a fourth and fourth and fifteen? He done dropped it. Fuck. Man. I'm he talking done. about. I'm talking about running the wrong route, forgetting your play. Time, yeah. You supposed to be in a B gap. You in a C gap. We we didn't have those problems. He was where he was supposed to be when he was supposed to be there. He didn't make the play. That's not the same as we told you. Three yards outside the hash. We told you plus 18, two yards inside the hash. That's different from I was where I was supposed to be, but I did not make the play. Mm. His assignment, he did it. He was where he was supposed to be, but he dropped the ball. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So Now, those teams, you got somebody going the wrong way. You got somebody blitzing. They ain't supposed to be blitzing. <laughs> That's assignment. That was never the problem with that 017. Hey, man. Hey, man. Been on that topic a little right. too long. I want to switch it up real quick. I want to switch it up. Uh, I definitely wanted to get y'all thoughts on this this specific topic. Cause we got a guy here that, that started. Football wasn't the first sport. A couple guys. My Football wasn't my first sport. But um, I wanted to get you guys thoughts on the fact of athletes and just feeling like as far as young kids, do they have to? immediately start playing tackle football at four or five years old or you think it's a better option for the guys to develop so for me personally i feel like a kid could develop playing seven on seven and running track versus playing tackle football at a young age i feel like you could, it, it depends on the position that you're playing if you're a receiver db and that's a position that you know you want to play moving forward you might be better for you to just jump into some seven on seven flag football and running track to develop those skills that you need once you finally get to that level, you feel me? I, I just don't think jumping into contact football is, you know, it could be beneficial for all kids. Y'all thoughts? That's tough. That's tough for me because I started off at like five. And I mean, like, you ain't hitting. Throw me into somebody type, you know, gray yard football. So <laughs> it's tough. I think, like you said, it's position specific. But I, it's also something you can't teach about giving a, ki- giving a kid that toughness. You know what I'm saying? Being able to be knocked down and get back up. Um, and I think that the gear is safe enough now where you can where you can do that. Um, if anything, you got to try to get those mamas under control because that my baby got hit too hard. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, th- I th- I'm all for a tackle. I think it just needs to be as safe as possible. And I think that we need better coaches sometimes on a lower level that aren't into this politic and match between them and the parents and really talking about trying to teach these kids how to tackle and fall correctly. Boy, you just said them out for yeah. right there, boy. No, I agree 100%. Now, I'd be lying if I say, like, because um, I just had a son, so I'd be lying if I say, like, yeah, I I'm, not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to put my son in football at four years old. You know what I mean? Because, like you said, I started playing football at four. 
You feel me? So it's like uh, I just feel like that that difference as far as teaching the kid that toughness. Right. You know, he can't get in the world. He can't get that in flat football. It's different. Right. You know I mean, but as far as like the different coaching. You know what I mean? That's what I wish we do have, like, more of, like, good coaching. You know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. like, I coach at the park also now. But I just see, like, it's dudes who ain't never played football. They play math for real. You see? Yeah. <laughs> so, and that ain't real football. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm 50 50 on it as far as, like, of course, I want my son to be tough. You know, I feel like he's going to learn that toughness of uh, playing football. and But uh, just the coaching. Yeah. I just wish it's, like, more coaches as far as, like, being able to teach the kids, you know, the game of football. My opinion on that, because that's a. That's that's key. And the dilemma we have, in my opinion, the qualified coaches, and like I be getting in depth. And like that's why he don't really like arguing with me. I get too in depth. <laughs> <Watch> right. <laughs> but I take it all the way back to how the black man is valued, you know, off his ability to provide. And the quality coaches, they too busy trying to provide for their household. And the guys who are out there coaching your son, they got time to be out there. You see what I'm saying? And that's really what's going on. And until we can change the dilemma of what we pay the coaches and all the way in high school in Florida. Compared to what they make in Texas? Down to Pop Warner. Then we can change the qualifications. Then we can really say, hey, Malik, boy, we paying you 50000 to coach this 11U. Now we can really hold you to some prerequisites, you know? But as long as coaches like who are capable of doing it got to go work a 10-hour shift, you know, ain't nothing you can do about it. You got to be okay with who's coaching. We have to trust those coaches to go study more ball, go learn more ball. These coaching clinics. Coaching clinics, so but coaching not just clinics. going to know any coaching clinic like – Everybody got some got 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 some got some s- sort of money in their pocket. You need to get to the big one, the AFCA. Ah, for you sure. See what man. I'm saying? Hey, I yeah. remember shit. Shout out, to, shout out the pool, man. One day we was at New Orleans. He was like, "Man, K, man, I need you to get in your bag with this receiver stuff." So, man, come to my crib, man. I'm finna invite one of my dogs over. We finna come. We finna chop it up with you. Lo and behold, <laughs> man, Michael Lee walked through the door. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we sit back there, you know, we just chopping it up. You know, he actually was just sitting there dropping gems. I don't even know if you remember that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, man, we were just sitting there dropping gems, man, just just, just motivating me in a way that he didn't even know that he was doing, you know. And I don't even know if he knew that what he was there for, but I took everything he was saying like, like a sponge, literally soaking it up, you know, and, and, and taking little bits and pieces and adding my spin to it. So, like you said, as far as coaches, you know, reaching out, it's okay that you feel like you don't have – as much information as the next coach but if you right. really if if the goal is to help these kids develop in these different areas then you should seek out the knowledge from seek those knowledge. who know you know so that, that was that was my yeah. first point just because i heard you say that but to answer the question i tell people all the time and like i turn down so many opportunities to coach seven on seven i don't support seven on seven at all mm. at all 